On this week's episode of Good For You, friends don't let friends. Miss but... their 5 p.m. beer. Fresh beer. Fresh <laughs> <That's> beer. <it. laughs> Miss their boob beers. Hello and welcome to Good, good for, for You. Good for you, man. Good for you. Good for you. Good for you. Podcast about the things we go to, the purchases that haunt us, and best products, services, and industry happenings in the wellness, well-being, and spiritual space. We're going to give you a healthy little dose of fun. We're going to talk about the things that are happening in pop culture, the ones that got away, the things in our cart that are haunting us or ghosting us, our strong opinions that are loosely held. <laughs> we like to call this the Grex. The group text. The group text in your ear. So come say hello. Join us in the audio Grex, where friends don't let friends get, get scammed. scammed. Hello, we're back. We back, baby. <laughs> 2023. So I did a lot of things during this hiatus. Uh, oh, yes, you were busy. But I would say maybe one of the most important things I did was this. <laughs> <laughs> Which, for those who can't see, this is a triple XL. Oh, yeah. It's it's a 32-ounce <laughs> water bottle that, yeah. for some reason, is so skinny. It's, so, it's not girthy, but it is tall and long. And... It's amazing. And I when I first bought it, I was like, whoa, well, I <laughs> fucked up. That was, that was a mistake. Well, the, <laughs> I was not those, expecting that. <laughs> you know, my problem of ordering many things on Amazon. Yes, was that opposite. was it. It was it, it was exactly the opposite. I, was, I wasn't thinking it through. We're going to talk about this more, but it was a 4 a.m. breastfeeding purchase. And I was like, well, I need that. And then it got here and I was like, mm. but then I was going to send it back. But then I, I filled it with some water. I started drinking out of it. And I was like, honestly. This is kind of a sleigh. Sleigh! Like, it's amazing. <laughs> and, I, and I have drank so much water because of it. So, slim water bottle, we will link. But that is what, that's my drink of the week. <laughs> and I, every day, honestly. And the key question I have for you is, does it fit in your average drink holder? Yes, it does. That's why okay. it's so skinny. Because the big ones, you know, the big gulps that you normally get don't fit in a cup holder. So They don't. I mean, I'm recommending it. This is one of the best things I've done in the last 10 weeks other than birth, give birth to my child. Definitely number two. 100%. <laughs> Rounding out 2022 with two of your <laughs> biggest accomplishments. It's true. I have a lot to be proud of, but how are you? I'm well. I'm hydrated as well. Just with some regular tea, we are going to bring drink of the week back. <laughs> it requires some coordination. <laughs> it does because now we're on opposite coasts. And mm-hmm. let me tell you, dry January? No, I'm not doing it. I'm doing wet January. I'm drinking a beer every night at 5 p.m. because I'm <laughs> breastfeeding. <laughs> so who was the first person who recommended this to you or where did you hear it first? And you're like, you know what? I'm going to try that. I don't know. But I was just like, I can't. That can't be true because I also don't drink beer. And I was like, I'm not going to do that. Like, I'm a grown up. I don't need to drink a beer every day for when I have a child. That seems ridiculous. And then I had a child and I was like, oh, my God, I've never I wanted need a beer, beer. more. <laughs> But this very specific beer, like I don't, I don't want to drink like a lager or God forbid an IPA or a double IPA. It's this one beer that I was obsessed with when I lived in New York called a Harpoon Winter Warmer. It's basically the gingerbread of beers and it is so good. So I found one that's similar because they don't sell Harpoon in California and mm. I've been drinking one every day and breast milk production is off the chain. We are, we're an overproducer. So. <laughs> As they say, a beer a day keeps the lactation consultant away. <laughs> That's right. That is the famous saying. <laughs> You're just doing your due diligence to I'm just make being sure. a good mother, okay? Yeah. <laughs> Don't beer shame me. <laughs> but it is like really weird. Because that's just not in my personality or in my daily habits to like at 5 p.m. go crack open a beer. I like kind of judge myself a little bit and I'm like, well, I only have one and that's it. And maybe one day you'll get crazy and want to. (laughs) (laughs) And then. (laughs) Then we'll really have to worry. But it's like, you know, instead of a kombucha, my silly little drink, I get my silly little beer out, you know. Sounds like a great ritual. I wish I had a. (laughs) excuse for a 5 p.m. beer every day. Bring drinking back, you know? (laughs) 
exactly. It's just casual happy hour. I mean, I think my parents have a drink every day at least at 5 p.m. Just really? casual functioning alcoholics. I say that with love. <laughs> there is something like kind of nice about having your official end of the day drink. But do you remember when cocktail culture was such a big deal in the early aughts? Yes, all the mixologists. Guys with mustaches and suspenders yes. who just love to make a drink infused with bacon. You know? And sometimes they would wear lab coats. Yeah. We love them. <laughs> You're not a chemist, okay? You're <laughs> you might have a drinking problem, but you are <laughs> not a scientist. <laughs> we have established this is a science podcast. How about new? No, we are going to be doing some predictions, some Pinterest predictions this episode. Next week, we're going to go into our own predictions for 2023, and we're going to be culling from various sources. But we thought that we would first look at the Pinterest predictions for 2023. So we're going to be talking about that later. But first, we have a good for who? Who? Good for you. Good for you. Good for him. Good for you. Okay, so this is mine. I've been spending a lot of time, I would say, on Instagram, more, way more than I would like. At 4 (laughs) a.m. Yeah, because I'm doing a lot of, you know, one handed activity. (laughs) Stop it. (laughs) No. And I've noticed a very interesting phenomenon that, phenomena, you know, that I want to talk about. And two things. So I got two ads within the last week asking me to invest in two companies. And <laughs> I get some weird ads, as we all know. But in the ads, it also mentioned how both of these companies were VC funded and backed by private equity and that you could be part of this exciting opportunity to invest in them. And my bullshit meter just went off the charts. I was like, mm, sorry, why would a VC backed company want my $450? That seems, that seems like chump change. So I did a little, I did a little digging. I did a little research and I'm also a little bit concerned that Instagram thinks I'm a qualified investor. But if you're a qualified investor, that means that you make, I think over $200,000. I could be totally wrong there. Oh, I didn't um, know that. Make X amount of money a year or have an income of X amount of dollars. And then you've been qualified. So you've been certified by a financial institution that you can invest kind of like safely, but also that you're good for the money that you have. That you, that okay, you so, you know, being you, you, you typically have to be a qualified investor in order to be an angel investor to mm-hmm. invest in companies. And these businesses are just advertising on Instagram to random people. I don't think I've, I've never, you know, put myself as a qualified investor before. So it's pretty, this is really interesting to me. So anyway. Well, these seem like crowdfunding campaigns, more like GoFundMes than mm-hmm, seeking qualified investors. <laughs> that is right. This is a glorified Indiegogo yeah. to help Koyuchi and Sensate land their Series C, which is really weird because, but, but also not weird. This is a trend that we've definitely been seeing over the last year as the economy has taken a turn down. Do you remember when we talked about House, H-A-U-S, the low ADV yeah. company? Mm-hmm. So they went out of business because they actually couldn't raise their next round from their investors. They'd raised $10 million before, or they were trying to raise $10 million and the round fell through and they just couldn't get any more money. So they had to shutter the business, which is really sad. And that was kind of a flare, an interesting flare because House was actually doing pretty well. They just weren't making a lot of money. And I think we're going to see a lot more of this in 2023. Speaking of trends, I think this is going to be one of the trends that we see these wellness brands struggle to keep up with inflation and a potential recession mm-hmm. and then looking to their customers to sort of buoy them beyond buying their products. So let's talk about mm-hmm. the two brands. The first one was Koyuchi. Have you heard of this brand before? Oh, yes. I feel like they're kind of, to me, a little bit of an Instagram brand. That's mm-hmm. where I discovered them and where they've advertised to me the most, although I've never bought from them. So at every increment that you invest, you get more bonuses, just like Indiegogo or whatever, a crowdfunding campaign. But I don't know how well, honestly, it's going to work. It's not that incentivizing. Like as someone who loves their sheets a lot, I don't think I would invest. I, I'm a little confused <laughs> in terms of why people, like why the average consumer who has extra cash on hand, to your point, who's not a qualified investor would sign up for this. It, it is really risky. 
like they're not, you're not going to get your money back and you're investing in a business that is already struggling. If they're struggling to raise capital, it's Mm -hmm. what is kind of cool. You get to peek behind the curtain. You kind of on the website, you get to see a lot about the holdings of the company, what Mm -hmm. their assets are, how well they're doing. And if you, I mean, you have to do your due diligence. So they have, they give access to that stuff, which is also fascinating if you want to learn more about the business. But I mean, it's a red flag, I think, if a VC isn't investing in you. And this is their Series C, so that means that they've raised money at least probably three other times. Why aren't their past investors coming back if they're doing so well and eager to invest in them, you know? Well, I I guess because of interest rates going up, capital is so much more expensive. So it makes sense that VCs are pulling back. And I think what I've also heard is that people are being asked to demonstrate much longer runway. Mm -hmm. So where it used to be a year of runway that you needed to have in the bank, if you're VC back now, they're asking for 18 months minimum, sometimes 24, as a proof of the fact that you're going to make it as a company through this uneasy economic period. So for a lot of people, that's meant these huge layoffs because headcount is sometimes the most expensive. It's usually that. And then marketing spend gets totally cut. It's kind of interesting to see who will make it. And I feel like a lot of these companies, from what I've heard from people who have VC-backed businesses, are are trying to just make it through the next year. If that means downsizing the team, if that means downsizing marketing, they're going to do whatever they can. And I think for some of these businesses that are trying to scale, ultimately they probably don't have the operating costs without that investment to hire more people. So they're not able to meet the demands of, Mm -hmm. let's say you're a D2C company and you're trying to fulfill orders, you might not be able to. Right. Or you're just basically barely hitting the minimum, right? Like that's often a problem that happens with product-based companies is that your costs are so high because you have to actually make the product that you have to have so much in the bank in order to make more so that you can then advertise and get more people to buy your stuff and not run out of it, which will hamstring you because it's not good to sell out. Like when that happens, when you see that happen with a business, it's actually like a really bad thing because that means that they didn't like forecast well enough. Yeah, this is on the one hand kind of crazy to see, but then on the other hand, it's like, okay, we're all, you know, tightening the purse strings. <laughs> yeah, I was thinking about the other brand that I saw come up on mm-hmm. my ads was Sensate, which was really hot. It was a wearable that you put on your vagus nerve. It was a big deal in 2018. Really? Like, I remember writing articles about it in 2018. But Did you try it? No. Oh, wait, I remember that one, the coil one. It, no, it's, no. it's kind of like shaped kind of like a trying a soft triangle and you'd put it on your vagus nerve so like right in between your boobs kind of where your like your sternum is and it kind of vibrates and like helps tone the vagus nerve and i don't know i just think that wearables are really hard to reach mainstream and like compete with an apple watch or even like a fitbit as we've discussed there's not a lot of great wearables out there other than the aura ring which i'm really enjoying and even though they've raised Sensei has raised from some really big names. I just don't think mm-hmm. that they they like got market saturation and they became a household name. And it's been five years. So they're having trouble closing the round, obviously, if they're looking to fundraise from people. And I kind of wonder what that means about like the wearable game in general. Like, is it that yeah. great of a business? I don't know. I feel like we see this stuff all the time. Like Apollo Neuro, we've talked about them on the podcast before. Mm-hmm. And it's just... Uh, They seem really inconsistent businesses, like fickle businesses to me. I feel like I've only seen people wear the Oura Ring. Apple Watch, I don't think, is necessarily considered in this category. But I haven't seen people consistently use anything but the Oura Ring. Yeah. The other one is Levels. I think the the one that goes on the back of your arm and it tests your blood sugar levels. But even that, I don't think people wear them forever. Like you wear it for a period of time. You know, it's not a long-term thing. That's true. And the thing about the Oura Ring versus Levels is it's not asking a lot of the consumer in terms of behavior change. Yeah. It's like you're already probably wearing rings, so a fatter, heavier (laughs) ring or thicker ring. Yeah, but like literally stabbing yourself with a thing on the back of your arm is not like your everyday routine. (laughs) Yeah, (laughs) a slight open wound. Exactly. (laughs) So I thought this was really interesting and... Uh, again, a trend for 2023, maybe not a good yeah. trend, but, yeah. eh. and is it good for anyone? I mean, 
bad for the businesses, of course, and maybe good for consumers. Like we can really, truly invest in the businesses that we love. We don't have to wait for them to go public and buy stock in them. We can own equity in them, which is kind of cool, but that's only if they survive. So drag it out on who this is, if this is good for anyone. One of the things that I saw when I was reading about this was AngelList has this new product that's called RUVs, roll-up vehicles. It seems like a similar thing where you sign up on AngelList, you get vetted, Mm -hmm. and then as a business, you're able to then share your link. And it looks like a GoFundMe slash Indiegogo, but for AngelList. Wow, this is so interesting. That's so cool. Yeah, it's interesting how it's marketed on this page. They're showing this screen of different investors who have invested 10,000, 9,000, 8,000, 5,000. So I think it's clearly targeting a specific type of person Mm -hmm. who has a smaller amount of capital but is interested in investing. So this is going to be interesting to see where this goes, especially to your point of the changing landscape for D2C companies with less VC in the mix. Yeah. And I have a couple brands on my short list that I'm like, mm, I think I'll, we'll see them raise this way this year, but I'm not going to say them because that's a bit mean. You have to wait till next <laughs> yeah, week. Yeah. But we'll get into our sexy, unique scam. I like it. Do you? I like it. <laughs> Honestly, is it predictions in general or is it just the Pinterest prediction? We're here to ask the question. We're posing the question. Yes, yes. I'm not saying it is a scam. I think most of the time people that are spotting trends, quote unquote, are just saying the opposite of what's popular now. (laughs) So they're like, you know, this is what's going to come next. Like everyone's dressing indie, indie sleaze. Everyone's going to go preppy next. It's like, yeah, because that's the opposite. And like, that's often, I guess, how things kind of work. But like, not everyone's going to dress preppy and not everyone's dressing indie sleeves. So I think that that it's like people are just predicting the cyclical nature of cultural trends. Yeah, it's like, that's kind of not a prediction, my guy. Like, that's a little bit cheating. But I don't know. I still love a trend, a trend spotting moment. I'll read every single list. I'm I'm weak for them. I have to know what this person thinks. Right. I'm simping for these <laughs> trend spotting, spotting, this trend spotting sub stack. Like I'll, I will read any email subject line that says our predictions. I think that's why we started this podcast. <laughs> we were like, we just want to talk about things that we think might be a thing maybe, <laughs> exactly. or are a thing. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Uh-oh. And like, I, I'm like, what is this ad I'm getting? Let's talk about it. <laughs> Pretty much exactly. It. <laughs> so this week we're going to review Pinterest predicts 2023. Yeah. I'm a little disappointed that they didn't at the top of this review their 2022 predictions and do a little. How well did we do? Review. They did say yeah. that their their predictions are like 87% accurate or something. For the last three years, 80% of our predictions came true. Okay. I do feel like this is a little bit softball because some of their predictions are already happening. It's like the mean girls. Hi, this is Karen Smith. It's 68 degrees and there's a 30% chance that it's already raining. And it's like, yeah, yeah. we're in the middle of this trend. (laughs) Like, thank you for spotting out what we're already doing. Well, and this is also a massive marketing campaign for their ad platform. Let's be honest. (laughs) So It's a very smart marketing campaign, just as Spotify's Wrapped is also equally smart. So they're not going to be like, turns out last year we fucking blew it. (laughs) We really shit the bed last year. And I also, I think that the 20% that's like not good, as I was looking through this Pinterest predicts list, I was like, these have to Mm -hmm. be just so they get press. Like they have to be, some of these have to be so ridiculous that they know they're going to get pick up with other outlets. Oh, they are baiting us left, right, and center. (laughs) The way that they've named some of these categories, there in total are 24 distinct trends that they predict. And we'll link all of this, but... We don't have time to go through all 24. No, we we do not. each picked our three favorites, our three sleighs. Slay! And then one... Yes. Not a (laughs) sleigh. (laughs) <laughs> and and then three flops yeah. or potential flops predicted oh I, flops. okay i only picked one potential flop but i picked so many because oh, okay. there are so many that could be potential flops so what's your sleigh number one my sleigh number one is their cha-ching challenge <gasps> okay i thought that was one of my sleighs too it's, it's great play. it's spot on and i would like to see this come to fruition and i feel like we've already seen it kind of on its way. So cha-ching challenge. Gen X and millennials will seek new ways to gamify their finances, searching for budget challenges and saving games. 
who said finances can't be fun. And I definitely at first thought this was endorsing gambling. <laughs> and I was like, okay, <laughs> wow, <laughs> going there. But <laughs> that's not necessarily what it means. And I think so they have Pinterest boards for each one of these trends, which are very weird to look mm-hmm. at because some of them I don't understand why they chose the photos that they did. But for the Cha-Ching challenge, it's hard to say. <laughs> I like what I'm seeing. I'm seeing fun looking journals. I'm seeing potential apps. I'm I'm on board to gamify the finance. Love it. Same. I, I think it's, you know, we've talked many times at Holisticism about how financial well-being is integral to your holistic well-being. So love to see that happening in a less scary way. I would like to point out, though, that for the categories, the audiences that they chose to include this for, Gen Z is not included. Hmm. Millennials, not included. Sorry, what? Only Gen X. (laughs) <laughs> and boomers and i don't know why i'm like millennials and, need and so that. is gen z that's okay i feel like that, yeah. i don't look at that part because i'm like I, don't tell me what audience this is for i'll, I'll, I'll tell so you silly. i couldn't <laughs> yeah, yeah exactly what's your next okay my for? play is chance of showers mm-hmm. Oh, <laughs> tell me more. Yeah. You know, I thought this was interesting. They say baths are so 2022. Those are fighting words. People will opt for a new <laughs> rinsing ritual. And when I like really thought about this and looked at it, <laughs> it says Gen X and boomers will turn rinsing into a ritual in the year ahead, searching for shower bombs and home spa bathrooms. Okay. Cool. Yeah, not no. AKA square footage is shrinking. No one can have a bath. Yes, exactly. <laughs> and it kind of made me think like, you know, bathing culture was so 2020, so anti-capitalist. And now maybe we're back in the we're back in the shower game. We're back going to work. We need we need a cost effective, time effective, also water more effective with water. Way to, you know, ritualize the cleansing. So I thought that was kind of cool. I liked that because I'm not I want to be a bath person. I'm an aspirational bath person, but I'm a shower girl. I also am a shower girl, unless the shower is too small to shave your legs, then you end up with cuts everywhere. Every shower in an Airbnb in Europe, I feel like is just barely big enough for you to like go 360, you know, turn all the way around. You're not shaving. You're not getting down to your Mm -hmm. ankle. Absolutely not. Definitely not. Okay. I agree. I, I'm all for that one. What's your Um, next play? My next one is the YOLO years. Nice. Because, I mean, we are living longer. So move aside. Nana's got plans. (laughs) I hate that so much. I really hate whoever wrote that. Yeah. I do. I (laughs) have a word for this copywriter. 2023 boomers and Gen X will plan epic bashes for major milestones from 100 birthday parties to 50th anniversaries. We're not talking bingo night here. Just look at those major anniversary cakes and thoughtfully decorated cookies. You know they'll say more years, more reasons to party. I don't like the copy, but I'm all for people living longer and having more parties. I'm a huge fan of parties. <laughs> like, yeah. I want to have a party for everything is what I've decided. Yeah. Like, everything is worth celebrating. Well, I also think it's funny thinking about what people search for and plan for with Pinterest because people definitely are always planning for different parties using Pinterest right. for inspiration for decorating. And last year they had alt parties mm-hmm. as a theme, which I also appreciated because it was like divorce party. Mm-hmm. I don't even know what Quitting else. your job think, party, like starting a business yeah, party. Yeah. yeah. I think on, the, on there they had pet pool parties, which is now it's – entirely own category. Yeah, they kind of phoned that one in. <laughs> <laughs> that one I'm suspect of. Yeah, I think that that was a plan. There. I think that's a meme, memeable one. Yes. Okay, I love that one too. Let's celebrate old people more. Exactly. My last slay, because Chiching Challenge, I don't think I can top that one, mm-hmm. is Crown Care, which I really like. And mm-hmm. interestingly enough, something is happening on TikTok. This scalp oil, rosemary scalp oil, oh, went viral right. and got sold out because it's so popular because people care about this stuff. They care about the crown care. So the copy says, if you want to get a head start on hair care in 2023, go back to your roots. Skinification or focus on scalp and crown, the scalp and crown of your head will be a priority for this year. I love this. I already am a fan of the brand crown affair, Mm -hmm. which is started as a scalp oil. And I think that that's true. That's been out since 2020. I think they launched in the middle of the pandemic. 
Now, do I own any of their stuff? No, but I like it. <laughs> I appreciate it from the I say, you go, girl. And I appreciate brand. your branding. Not for me, but go go off. I'm a castor oil person, and I'll just put castor oil in my hair, mm. because in my scalp, because that's what makes it grow. But I like mm. that. I like this a lot, like looking at a different way to promote hair health. And also, our skin on our face goes back. You know, it's not just like the, the, the skin that you put makeup on, like it's our whole head. It goes on. Got to take care of all of it. So Mm -hmm. I I, I like this one. This also seems more inclusive across the board. They have a picture of a black woman, and I know that scalp care is really important if you have curls. So I think that's cool. I'm into it. This one is hard for me because I had five categories. I am a little bit torn between All Aboard, their prediction for more train travel. Bring and conductors back. Before, <laughs> yeah, honestly, bring infrastructure to North America <laughs> that can handle trains yes. because we're lacking. So I'm going to choose the fourth trimester, actually, nice. even though I'm not somebody who's participated in this yet. <laughs> So the description is, people are coming to Pinterest for their postpartum needs. Millennials are seeking ways to support birthing parents that favor the fourth trimester. And I think that is really beautiful because it's more about how's the mom doing, what's happening after the baby is born, not just how quickly can you return to normal life. And I think that is really beautiful. Yeah. As someone in the fourth trimester, it is. How do you feel about that? It's really, it's not easy. Yeah. You, you, mm-hmm. and there's so much you don't know and there's so much people don't tell you. I know that that's like no. probably making it worse because I'm not telling you, but yeah, we could do a whole episode on it. <laughs> like, can't go over it. Can't go around it. <laughs> exactly. Gotta go through it. Yeah. There's so many products, so many things. Like there's just so much that you just don't know what's going to go, what's going to go down. And healing takes a really long time. Like, dang, Ugh, dude. Ain't that the truth? I'm, com- I'm coming up on and all 10 fun. weeks is what my doctor told me. So I have to take take 10 weeks off from yes. birth, which still is kind of right. not that much. No, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, side note, my friend was telling me everybody gets a midwife for free in Ontario, at least part of the healthcare system for, I forget how many weeks before birth, but then six weeks after birth, you get a midwife that is free, that is completely on your case and is there for you at any hour of the day to help with anything. That would be amazing to have because let me tell you, I've cried tears trying to just like get in touch with my OBGYN of like, is my vagina falling out? Like, please help me. (laughs) Is this normal? (laughs) Well, you know what's kind of interesting is that on here, I know this is not like predicting businesses, Mm -hmm. but it makes me think of if postpartum is a trending search, then what are the businesses that are going to result from there in terms of healthcare? Because so much healthcare here is obviously privatized and driven by private Mm -hmm. needs. So I'm curious to see what that means for startups and businesses. Well, I got two words for you. Placenta pills. Oh, have you started taking them? Yeah, let's talk about them next week. What the fuck is everyone doing with their placenta pills? Are you keeping them? Where are you putting them? Are you just throwing them out? What's happening? Okay. So we've talked about our Pinterest predictions that we're, we're into. Let's talk about the Pinterest flops. <laughs> that we predict are maybe too loose of a category or are already <laughs> right. happening or may not really hit. Or like are maybe a troll. They're like a purposeful yeah. troll. Uh, le clickbait. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> That's the technical term. So what is your first flop? Or Because you have many, multiple flops. I only prepared one, but I could definitely come up with more. <laughs> Overachieving for the flop category. I think you actually kind of called this out, but the pool party spelled P-A-W-T-I-E-S, which is referring to dog pool parties. I'm a little suspect, but as not a dog owner myself, Mm -hmm. I, you know, can't totally comment from personal experience, but as an auntie to many dogs, I have (laughs) not been invited to a pool party yet. Not a single one. And that's not because you're not popular or famous. It's because (laughs) it's because people are not having them. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. No. And, and as, you know, part of the dog mother contingent, you know, mm-hmm. as a member of the dog mother community, I would say pool potties are not happening and dog potties in general. No. Am I going to get my dog a cake on her birthday? Yeah. 
or a little treat, a sweet treat. Absolutely. Every time I go to Target and I have to get diapers, do I get her a toy as well so she doesn't feel bad when I bring something home for her brother? 100%. But I'm not throwing her her own birthday party. Like, that's just not, that's a step too far for me. Are they a trend that's sweeping the nation? Me thinks no. (laughs) Me thinks also no. The description of this category is dogs diving, puppers paddling, Barking belly flops. In, in 2023, pool parties are going to the dogs. We're talking party invitations, party favors, party decorations. Gen X and boomers don't plan to hold back for their next pet pool party. Jump on in, doggo. The water's fine. Okay, I do think that the copywriter is showing their age by saying doggo because it's a very millennial <laughs> thing to do. <laughs> I do participate in the doggo slang, I will admit. You are part of doggo culture, but... Yeah, that's my flop prediction. What is yours? So my flop is primal movement because for a couple uh-huh. reasons. And let me tell, let me read you the description. In 2023, people will trade their screens for stretches and their desks for tricep dips. These primitive anti-tech workouts invite people to put down their phones and prioritize posture. Gen X and millennials are driving this trend up with searches like primal movement and neck hump exercises. So um, that's scary. But here's why I think this is a flop. First and foremost, because last year we already had this trend with like walking outdoors like outdoor exercise, outdoor workouts. It's a little bit of a recycling. And I vibe with that. That's not a prediction. That's a recycling of last year's trend. And I feel like this is an aspirational search that people always are looking for. Like this is evergreen. In January, we're all like, I'm going to join a gym. I'm going to work out. I'm going to get rid of my neck hump. I'm going to get off my my computer. You know, I'm going to like walk outside and smell the fresh air. And that's great, but I don't think that's like a new thing. I'm going to watch Netflix on the treadmill at Less. seven incline. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I'm going to do my, what is it, 12 incline, three speed for 20 minutes. That's the yeah. workout on TikTok. It might not even I, be 20 minutes. It might be like 12 minutes or something. The only word that intrigues me in here is the anti-tech workout. I think that's just called maybe embracing nature. <laughs> Yeah, I think like this is a subtle neg at Peloton, perhaps. Or the climber, the Versa climber. Or the Versa climber, your most hated. The exercise machine you have the biggest vendetta against. If you want to feel a shot to feeling like a complete asshole, just try the Versa climber. <laughs> no shade to anyone who enjoys it. I just think it's <laughs> hilarious. It does feel ridiculous. And the primal movement coming in reminds me a little bit of like paleo and CrossFit trend of 2000, let's say 14, 15, 16, 17. Mm. So I wonder if CrossFit is going to make a comeback. I'm not sure. They got canceled big time during the pandemic, but Mm. maybe. I just think that this is a bit of a flop. It was a bit lazy on Pinterest part. And I think we could do better. I think there's more interesting workout regimens slash perspectives that are trending in the universe right now which we will talk about next week so i just had an upcoming thing spoiled for me i'm not going to say what it is if it's a movie or a game or a musical album but one of the major twists was spoiled for me by a person so how do you rate the pinterest predicts overall genius marketing campaign must say for their ad platform gorgeous design like it's really cute super cute i in fact I actually saw someone wearing a Pinterest Predicts sweatshirt the other day while I was at Canyon Coffee. It was like all the trends were combining. It was it was crazy. Whoa. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was like, I am on trend right now. <laughs> That's interesting. In their description, when they talk about how they pick these trends, there's definitely a part where they reference their trend spotters. They say... Our cross-functional team of writers, designers, researchers, and strategists come up with blah, blah, blah during Insights Week, and we come up with 50 distinct trends. At the same time, our trend spotters look at what's happening in the world at large to identify the why behind the trends. That would be the most fun job. Like, I yeah, like, Hello. <laughs> love to work on this project. <laughs> Dream job. Yeah. Making the Pinterest predicts. <laughs> we can help you make sure you don't reduce, reuse, and recycle your trends from last year. <laughs> yeah. They, I think they need some fresh blood because these do feel a little bit phoned in. But maybe, like we said at the top, trends aren't really that different from your to year. Right. We want them to be because we want things to move quickly and we Mm -hmm. like to think that culture shifts that quickly, but I am not so convinced that it actually does. Right. Let's get into our last segment, which we have not done in a long time. Haunted Cart. Haunted Cart. 
It's been so long. We've basically got a haunted dumpster truck. <laughs> That's not great. Something that haunting me is not only the ethical decision making that is involved in here, but H and M Home. I forgot about them. Yeah. Almost barely knew they existed. But I've been in this habit of when I find something that I want. Right now, it's centered on home stuff because we're like you're in transition. You're making your way into your space. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And so often what I'll do is I'll find something I like and then I'll use the Google shopping tab yeah. and compare prices. Yeah. So in the case of why I ended up on H&M was because I was looking for a jute hamper, like a seagrass weave hamper. Because yeah. I found some really beautiful ones for like 150 bucks. And I was like, that's way too much <laughs> for a hamper. <laughs> and I found almost a replica on H&M Home. Now, is it tiny? Is it for dolls? Or is it a normal no, size? No, I measured it. Okay. It's a good size. Okay. It's a good size. But children make it, made it. Sweat labor. <laughs> <laughs> that is for damn sure when you're talking H&M. So I haven't pulled the trigger on any of the H&M home stuff because I do feel morally really not good about it. And then I realized I was doing this on my phone. And the other day I did oh. it on my computer where I have the Goodbye yeah. app installed and it works very well. It gave me some other options. Okay. That's cool. I didn't know that it worked on anything other than Amazon. Any site. If you have it as your Chrome extension, sometimes it doesn't have exact matches. So it surfaces very interesting stuff. But also in my haunted cart this year are vintage calendars because you can look up which calendar you can reuse for 2023. Mm -hmm. And my favorites so far are 1967, 78, 89, and 95. The so days line up with yeah. from 1965. Mm -hmm the days of this year, 2023, like January yes. 19th is a Thursday. Yeah. Which I think is cool to think about if you could find which year will coordinate with your birthday. That's also yeah. a great gift. Lots of research. You know, the right person cool. would appreciate that. Ethan um, would appreciate that because he has a date book that's from like 1957 um, in our, in our cabinet somewhere, our notebook cabinet. And it's from yeah. the 1950s. It's really cute. He's like, I'll use it in 2045. I'm just yeah. my he probably time. is not even counting, not even planning on using it. He just wants to hoard it because it's cool, but I think you should use it. I'll do some research for him. Wait, are you going to buy a bunch of 2023 calendars? You should get like the most 2023. Cool you get like a TikTok calendar. If Addison Ray has a calendar, you should get that. Something that really is so zeitgeisty and of the moment that will be people will be like wow like the beanie babies of 2023 so i just have to hoard them for 11 years and then <laughs> apparently in 2034 you can use all of your 2023 calendars so if you have extra cash to blow on a bunch of really cool probably not so cheap calendars <laughs> That's yeah. the way to go and if you didn't use your calendar last year just hold on to it for 10 more years there you go. Which I'm sure a lot of people have a stack of calendars that they've just kept. Anyways, I digress. Last thing on my list, I was talking to my cousin about her fertility journey. And she was on birth control, like many people, for 17 years. And recently went off it and was like, oh my god, I don't know anything about my body. Turns out I feel completely different. And now I have to go through the journey of, you know, learning everything is she, again. Is she no longer attracted to her partner? Because that can happen. I know. I didn't ask. I know. She did bring it up. <laughs> she, like, do you hate boning or what? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Are you ready to blow up your life? Because I was <laughs> when I went off. <laughs> do you want to destroy? <laughs> well, it changes your brain. Like, women report coming off birth control being like, damn, I didn't know it was a creative ass witch. Like, Right. Totally. I'm really fucking cool and I shouldn't be sitting at this nine to five desk job. <laughs> yeah. And I actually hate half the people I hang out with. <laughs> Yikes. <laughs> but it, she turned me on to this thing, which I'm pretty sure I've seen advertised before, but she was explaining it to me in detail called Mira fertility kit so it's actually usually designed for people who are trying to get pregnant she uses it for contraception because it's so accurate so it's not cheap but it's kind of an upfront cost of 
buying the actual kit, which I think is 200 bucks. And then you do have to replace the sticks. Hmm. So you pee on this on the stick and it syncs up to an app and it's essentially testing for when your egg is about to drop when your egg has dropped and when the egg drops right exactly (laughs) yeah and she tested the accuracy of it while she was getting blood tests Mm -hmm. and she was like it 100 percent works and she's been using it for a few months now and she's like i would recommend because i was telling her i want to get off my ied eventually this summer so this is haunting me this is very interesting to me because i need I'm in that point in my life where my doctor's like, you ready to get on birth control? And I'm like, not really, but I don't really want you to stick anything up there right now. Thank you so much. This could be actually for you, which is why I brought it up. (laughs) Wow. Okay. I wonder. It's the most harmless option. I'm sure they're not guaranteeing 100% accuracy, but it's also a cool way to get to know your natural cycles. Totally. I've tried natural cycles before. I found it pretty inaccurate because I had long, irregular periods. But right. when I got pregnant, I was tracking my ovulation, just peeing on ovulation mm-hmm. sticks. And this is probably been right. accurate. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And the aura ring actually has that now, too. It tests ah, your body temperature, your temperature? and it kind yeah. of guess, guesses. So I, I bet if you had a couple different inputs, you could get like you could figure out when your fertility window is and be cautious around it if you need to be. I love this. I'm going to look it up. Let me know what you think, because you could probably by ovulation sticks and maybe we don't need this whole platform and maybe this is just a fancy pee stick situation but it could be nice. yeah sort of the juicero of ovulation yes. <laughs> yeah yeah Great i'm gonna look this up at 4 a.m when i do most of my best best slash worst research because boy oh boy over the last eight weeks i have been up at 4 a.m a lot and let me tell you the bar is low. The barrier for me, make, my decision-making processes are are inhibited at that time. I get why people like who have insomnia and go on HSN, Home Shopping Network, like spend all their money on like little trinkets and doodads because everything looks good at 4 a.m. You're like, that will fix my life. That's true. So I have a haunted cart that is my haunted 4 a.m. cart. And it's not quite haunted. It's honestly, yeah, it's honestly just like, (laughs) these are things I bought and I really like. So, okay, the first thing is these compression leggings. So I found these. I'm obsessed with them. I'm obsessed with compression already. We know this. And I'm recovering from having a bebe. And I found, this is the name, just don't judge it too much. It's probably for SEO. They're called the Homa Activewear Thick High Waist Tummy Compression Slimming Body Leggings Pants. Love They're a <laughs> very direct name. Yeah, Cut to exactly. Chain. Leggings Pants. That is, that's perfect. Yeah. I get, I know what I'm getting. But it's as like horrible as the name sounds. They're the most comfortable leggings I've ever worn. Like, I want to throw all my other pants away. I already bought in that is in a different color because they're really comfortable, but they're also really supportive. And I, they're great for working out, but also just walking around and existing. And they're like a really nice weave that's a little thicker than like a Lululemon and a line pant, which I personally kind of like. I like a little bit of a thicker legging. But not as thick as a jegging, right? R.I.P. Not at, we're not getting into jegging territory. We don't do jeggings in this household. Although, no. did you know that jeggings are back? Like, no. Prada just sent some jeggings down the runway. Yes. Okay, jeggings are back in a big way. next week. It's, I'm not into it. Okay. The next thing on my list is the Clever Matcha Blend. So you just add water. It is so good. Dude, I bought this three times already and I ran out yesterday morning. I need to, and I need to get it delivered tomorrow. Like it is, or I need to go get some at Erewhon. It's so good. You just add water. It's oat milk based. There's also probiotics Mm -hmm. and mushrooms in it. And it tastes so good. It's better. Honestly, it's better than like most matcha lattes that you get out mm. for $7. No, a place. cancel those. Can't do it anymore. No. Can I tell you my trick? Yes. Okay. What I do is I put it into the frother, the all of the powder, and then I add a little bit of water mm. and then it gets really, really frothy. And then I pour that into my cup and then I add more hot water to sort of top it off. And then sometimes mm. I'll do like a little creamer and I'll froth a little bit of creamer and do like a dollop of creamer on top. If I'm feeling Let me great. And the nut pod creamer. Nut pods. That's right. We hate the name, but we we love the game. Uh, <laughs> it feels weird drinking nut pods, but I really enjoy them. Okay, the next thing that's on my list is 
cuticle oil pens. I got empty ones because I, for some reason, have, well, partially because of you, I have so much castor oil in my house. I have, <laughs> you gave me some when you moved. I'm a castor oil you apologist mean, and yeah. I, I stand by it. It's what makes your hair grow if you rub it into your scalp. We talked about this on the pod with a trend. So I have all this oil and I'm like, what the fuck am I going to do with it? And my cuticles are looking like ragged. So I got cuticle, empty cuticle oil pens for like $5. 10 of them. I filled them up with my castor oil and I put those, I put those pens everywhere. I put them next to my bed. I put them in the office. I put them in the car. And then when I'm feeling like, Ooh, these are dry. I can just do, 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 fix it up. It's great. I maintain my position on this extremely industrious of you. Thank you. Also this sort of an extension of my gel and dip manicure investigation. Mm. And I will say it's going well. Okay. Next thing on my list. I got it right here. Let me just get my prop. Cordless bubble lamp that looks like oh, yeah. <laughs> I clearly fucked up and got a mini one, as I showed you the other day. So this is... It's like an orb. And it's a baby lamp. At least the one I bought it was explicitly a baby lamp. And that was my intention. I was like, I got to get a lamp for this baby's room because we can't turn the lights on at 4 a.m. We need yeah. something soft and delicate. Yeah. And then I was like, wait, that's kind of cute. And I kind of want one for my office because when I come here in the morning, it's dark, and I don't like overhead light. It makes me want to throw up. So I got it. I really like it. And good light matters. And the last thing that I got, you're going to laugh at me. Well, two things. Space-saving pants hangers. Oh. I, uh, I don't know you... how I was living in our tiny-ass closet without these space-saving pants hangers. I don't know how I'm living without it now. I, I When you told me about this, I looked it up and did not purchase, but... That's only because I forgot. <laughs> I'm about to purchase. <laughs> Let me tell you, they're amazing because I was so looking forward to getting into my pants, getting into my own pants after not wearing pants for so long. And Manually they, I, or vibrating? <laughs> <laughs> We're not quite at that stage yet. We haven't totally healed. <laughs> right, right, right. right. <laughs> We're in the foreplay <laughs> stage, yeah. No, but I really, like, I got all my pants out from storage. I folded them. I put them in this pants holder thing that we had and they all fell out they kept falling on the floor and I kept getting really Rude. frustrated and mad at Ethan I was like why are you knocking my pants over it was not a him problem it was a me problem and my folding issue but that inspired me to get these these space saving pants hangers you can hang six pairs of pants on this hanger and it's basically flat because they're like staggered so it doesn't take up any extra space in your closet and wow game changer and they came in okay. two, and I was going to give one to Ethan, and then I said, no, <laughs> I want both of these. Not for you. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm like, do you have enough pants? Like, I think he only has three pairs of pants, and that is not that who him. I am. Yeah, I love yeah. that for him. That's not me. Could never be me. Nice. Um, I but I do think that this has definitely, like, helped save our relationship. So would recommend mm-hmm. it if you were in a small space. And the last thing that I bought yesterday, last night, was a fucking bread maker on Mercari. Because okay, she's a bread girl. <laughs> Am I ever? Well, you know this about me. But I, I now I'm a Jewish mother. Well, I'm a mother, and my son is Jewish. So I'm a mother. Uh, I'm a mother. So I'm like, I gotta make challah. Like I don't know. I got in my oh. head. Where I'm like, I have to now. I may have to make challah every Friday. I spiraled. I was like, how am I gonna make bread every Friday with my work schedule? It takes two, three hours to proof. I definitely need a bread maker. Mm-hmm. So that was the journey I went down, and I'm excited about it, honestly. I think it's going to be good. I also think bread makers are like a fast track to nostalgia and happiness because no one can be mad when you smell the smell of bread. You're immediately, like, you get a dopamine hit. Absolutely. I mean, and the the level of, like, aspirational homemaker that I turned Mm -hmm. into when I thought about what I could make in my bread maker, I was like, I could make a sandwiches Um. with fresh bread every day. Oh my gosh. Not that either of us eat a sandwich at home, but like we could, you know, you could. we could now. Are you going to braid your hala? Absolutely. I made one t- this morning. Well, technically I made one last night. It took forever and I braided mm. it and it's gorgeous. So I'm really excited about my hala journey and, the and I'm even more excited that it's not going to take me basically like half a day to do it. It'll take me far less time. Oh, yeah. Can't wait to test the results of this bread maker in a few weeks. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, I'm I'm gonna make bread for you. I'm gonna make I'm gonna make so much. I'm gonna make bagels for you. It's gonna be great. Oh, can't wait for the bagels. That's a good haul. 
I will say. Yeah, I appreciate it's all over the, the updates place. of everything that you have bought. I only I only want to share the things that have actually really improved my life significantly over the last couple of weeks because there's a lot that I we bought for our baby and like parenting life that we haven't even touched and is totally useless. So these are the things no. that were that really, really helped. What's one of the top things that you think is useless that you thought you would use? It's not that like here's the the thing about baby stuff. It's not that it's it's useful to somebody. It just didn't work for us. And mm-hmm. our thing was this halo bassinet that I was like having so much anxiety over because I was like we need a bassinet that that can easily like float over the bed and that we can pull down the side so we can grab the baby but so we got it on Mercari which was great tons of stuff on there for babies we used it for like three days and then they're like we're ordering we're ordering a snoo like we're we're renting a snoo (laughs) it's not it was like it didn't exactly work for our bed It, it wasn't it wasn't the right thing for us and for Rhodes so it's kind of just like sitting in the baby room right now and we either have to resell it or maybe we'll start using it in a different way but if you live in a cold climate this sounds kind of like crazy this makes me sound crazy but also two days into roads being born I was like we need a towel warmer like we just we need a towel warmer and a clothes like so like we can throw his clothes in there and get them warm when he gets out of the bath or whatever like at night (sighs) that's a really nice experience even for for us like I'll put my towel in there when I get in the shower and then I'll get out of the shower and it's all warm and cozy and it feels so good. And it's great for roads, obviously, but also like great for us. It was like a hundred bucks and it is, it is great. Recommend. That's Wait, like that the frother. A, that's a life upgrade. Yeah. That's like, it's like the frother where you're like, oh, now, now like this, this experience of like making coffee at home is so exponentially better. So much, yeah. so much better. And like. I think same thing with the towel warmer, especially in a cold place like New York, where you're just like, yeah. oh, I don't want to put on my, I just got on my warm shower. I don't want to put on my cold towel. It deserves to be cozy, you know, coziness 100%. for all. Well, we are going to be back next week with our predictions for 2023. They're going to be all over the place. They're going to be smart, unhinged, researched, and smart. unhinged, <laughs> all, of, all of the above. <laughs> These oh, predictions yeah. have everything and we can't wait to introduce them to you. But before we go, we are giving away the slim SLM water bottle that Michelle SLM water purchased. Bottle. Any yes. size you want, any color you want. We are Sugar Daddy Slim Water Bottle. Slim Water Bottle Sugar Daddies. You can have any slim bottle you want. All you <laughs> have right. to do is write in your review on Apple Podcasts and please be kind, you know, just some positive affirmations for us. If you have feedback, which we love to hear, you can always email it to us at hello at ohalo.com. But reviews, five stars, please. Please, please we we appreciate you. (laughs) And we will announce the winner next week on the pod. And if you have any predictions for 2023, we are all ears. We will shout you out and your prediction on the pod. We record it next week, so get it in quick. And you can do it by replying to... You can send us a voice note on Anchor. You can reply to the question on Spotify about this podcast, or you can write to us on IG at Good For You Pod. Well, that's it. Have a great summer. <laughs> Don't change. Thank you. Don't